Hey, this is Chris Plush from CG Masters, and in this video I'll show you five awesome procedural texturing tricks from our latest course, Master Procedural Texturing in Blender. So up first, let's go over how to round off the corners of tiles using a math node. And for this trick to work, you'll need two sets of perpendicular wave type gradients like this. And then when you mix them together using a math node set to smooth minimum, It'll blend each set of gradients together in a way that results in tiles like this. Now, you can create tile patterns other ways, and even mix these gradients together in other ways to get this same result, but the special thing about using Smooth Minimum is that now we can use this Distance option down here to round off the corners of those tiles, which is an incredibly handy trick. And if you want to learn more about how this example was built, then you can study the project files that I linked to in the description or you can check out the course as well for full explanations. And next up, let's learn about how superior the linear light blending mode is for distorting textures. So let me turn this collection off and turn on the one for linear light. So in this example, I've got a regular Voronoi texture here and it's using UV map texture coordinates. Now mixing anything with texture coordinates will distort the texture. And here I'm mixing in a noise texture with the texture coordinates using this mix RGB node. And when I increase the mix factor here, it'll mix in more noise with the texture coordinates, and that's going to distort the Voronoi texture. So that's pretty simple, but the problem is you can see that the texture actually moves out of place as it's being distorted. Now sometimes that doesn't matter, but oftentimes this can cause problems, so ideally we'd want to distort the texture without moving it. And to do that, we simply go up here to the blending modes and switch the blending mode over to linear light. And now as I increase the mix factor, you can see we're distorting the texture without moving it out of place. So when it comes to mixing stuff together, linear light is often the superior blending mode. All right, next up, we'll learn about faking directional blur for any texture. So let me switch off this collection and go over to our directional blur collection. And let me select this. And in this example, we're gonna be using an image texture as you can see, but this technique will work for any procedural texture as well. Now the trick here will be to take a range of texture positions. And for every point on the surface, we'll show the texture at a random position within that range and this is gonna give us a dithered and blurry result. So right now we're using UV coordinates and I've got these UV coordinates running into a mix RGB node set to add. And we're adding in a red value of 0.1. Now red represents the X axis. So when you add that to texture coordinates, you're basically moving the texture along the X axis. So when we increase the mix factor here, we're adding more red to the texture coordinates and this is moving the image sideways. So this is our range of positions for the texture. And now to fake a blur, we just need every point on the surface to show a random position within this range of positions. And we can achieve this by running the texture coordinates into a white noise texture node. And then the value output up here would give us random grayscale values between zero and one for every point on the surface. And then when we plug this into the factor field here, then those random values become random factor values, showing the texture at random positions, and this results in this linear blur effect. And now, the brighter the red value, the more of a range of positions we have, so the more things will be randomized and blurred in the end. And you can add other axis colors as well to blur in different directions, like we can add green to blur this on the y-axis. And that's really cool, but what about a full blur instead of just directional? Well, we can achieve that easily with a similar setup. So let me turn off this collection and turn on the one for full texture blur. So here we have the same exact setup as before, but instead of adding red to the texture coordinates, let's add the white noise texture to it instead. And while the value output up here gives us random grayscale values between zero and one, the color output down here is gonna give us random colors instead. And like we learned about adding colors to texture coordinates, it'll move the texture in those directions. So if every point on the surface is a random color, and we add those random colors in with the texture coordinates, this will move the texture in every direction on every point on the surface. So let's see it in action by connecting the color output here to the bottom color input there. And now when we increase the factor value, 
it mixes more of those random colors in with the texture coordinates, and there we go. Now, one problem is that as the texture blurs, you can see it moving out of place. It's moving down and to the left. Luckily, we know how to fix this by simply changing the blending mode here to linear light. And now when I increase the factor value, the image blurs, but it does not move out of place. Now, just a couple of things to note about the blur techniques. It may look noisy in the previews, but the more samples you have when rendering, the more this gets smoothed out. And because this is more of a dithering effect where every point on the surface has a random value, it won't work that well as a displacement map, unfortunately. It'll be very noisy. All right, and finally, let's learn about how you can automatically round off gradients to look better as bump maps or displacement maps. So let me turn this collection off and turn on the one called Smoother Step. All right, so here we have the same setup that we had for the rounding corners example. Now, to make this into a more usable height map for something like subway tiles, we can run this through a map range node here, and we can lower the from maximum value to add more contrast to this and flatten the surface, leaving us with just some tighter gradients around the edges of the tiles. And then what I did is I took this height map and I ran it through a displacement node here. And if we preview the final result, you can see that this gives us some nice beveled edges for all of our tiles. Now the problem is that these beveled edges are very angular and not smooth at all. And that's because the gradients we're using for the height map are linear gradients, meaning they get brighter and brighter at the same exact rate. So when you use that type of a gradient for a bump map or a displacement map, because it gets brighter at the same rate, that means it's going to get higher and higher at the same rate, producing this very angular bevel. Luckily, there's a cool trick to round these off automatically though. We simply have to go over to the map range node where the gradients are running through, and we switch the interpolation type here from linear down to smoother step. And there we go. And just like that, we have smoother bevels now. Now the smoother step option here is basically like taking a linear or straight line and rounding off the ends like a Bezier curve. And now the results are much smoother. All right, so that does it for this video then. If you like these tricks, there's a ton more to learn in our course that has step-by-step -step projects full of tips and explanations. So check it out in the link in the description or head over to cgmasters.net and I'll see you around.